been working for the University of the Aegean in a beautiful island called Syros. Are you familiar with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I, I travel from there. You know it? Yes, I'm from Syros. Really? Yes. Nice to meet you. And uh, I've been working there for the ICT team. I'm a freelance uh, English teacher and I've worked for many private schools. I've been examining students since 2006 for the University of Michigan, uh, mostly uh, levels between C1, C2. And uh, an Athena test licensed evaluator. Are you familiar? Is anybody familiar with the Athena test? Does anybody know? No. Okay. So uh, by 6 o'clock, most of you will know about it. And believe me, it's important. So, uh, actually, uh, my job is to try to combine English language teaching together with uh, learning difficulties. This is a little bit difficult, but very challenging to think. Uh, it all started many years ago with Ellen and Mark. Uh, Ellen was a student of mine who had been facing some problems. She was very willing. She was very well organized, but something seemed to be a kind of a problem. I mean, she could not uh, catch up with the class, although she tried. Um, this was the beginning of my journey, and I really appreciate Ellen, we're still friends. Ellen is the name, you understand, the false name. Yeah. Um, but I started with her because uh, I realized that. Ellen needed some extra help. She was uh, about 14 years old at the time. And I met her uh, at the English school I was working then. And I realized I had to do something more, support her in a different way, so, so that Ellen would manage it. And she did. The point is that she left me a taste that I needed to do something more. And I'm sure uh, some people here have have felt the same thing. We need to know something more about students who have been facing uh, learning difficulties. So this was the beginning of the journey and then came Mark. Mark was a different student. He was uh, very weak in uh, speaking and writing, but he was excellent in listening. They both uh, succeeded in getting their certificates and in giving me the stimulus to do something about it because they succeeded after uh, dealing with them in a different way. So Mark and Ellen were the beginning of the story. That story which still goes on. Take a look at it. Any comments? Raise your hands. 
<laughs> Have you ever thought what to do when you meet words like this? Has anybody done anything about it? Inform the parents. Sorry? Tell the parents. Tell the parents. They have to do something. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the things you should do. That's true. Well, if you if you come up with this at the age of 15, there's not much you can do. It's too late. It's too late. It's, no, it's not too late, but again, it's, it's, it's better and advisable to try to do something much earlier. Okay. So what is dyslexia? Is it an illness or a disease, a disorder, a disability? Well, there has been a lot of discussion not only on the definition, but also on whether it exists. It might sound strange to you, but there has been quite a lot of disagreement on whether there is dyslexia or not. Uh, there are people who still do not believe dyslexia exists. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about researchers, writers, and people who have done a lot about it and have worked on ELP, but still uh, do not believe uh, there is such a thing. It happens with most scientific issues, you know that. There, is always, there are always opponents and supporters. So it happens again with uh, learning difficulties and dyslexia. Despite the fact that 10% in the United Kingdom, all three students per class face learning difficulties or dyslexia problems, according to Child Trust, there are still scientists who are not convinced. And if you uh, take a look at the book, a fresh book, The Dyslexia Debate, by Professor uh, Julian Elliott and Eleanor Grigorenko, you will see that they really don't agree with the idea. They question the term itself as much as the efficacy of each diagnosis. So they, they actually, Elliot is one of the people who has really opposed to that. And uh, in 2005, during a German university conference on learning difficulties, uh, Elliot, who's an educational psychologist and co-author of this book, uh, claim that dyslexia was a construct which has gained currency largely for emotional rather than scientific reasons. And at, at this conference, members of the audience stopped him from going on because he didn't agree. So there is an argument here. Just to let you know, because we're not here to, to talk about the argument, we're here to talk about dyslexia. The first description of dyslexia appeared in 1896 from Dr. Pringle Morgan in Sussex, England. So it's quite old. As most of you know, because uh, most of you are Greek here, it comes from the word uh, from the Greek word from this meaning difficult and lexis, which means words. It affects 12 to 15 percent of the global population. 70 to 80 percent is hereditary. Approximately 3 to 5 percent of children face learning difficulties. The radio is for boys to a girl. Quite interesting. It's more common among left handed people, but this is not a rule. This doesn't mean that because your child or your student is a right handed person may not have dyslexia problems. It's not a rule, okay? United States and UK, 10% of UK children have dyslexia and 20% in the United States. 4 out of 10 people who are unemployed in the UK have learning difficulties. 40 million American adults and 2 million of them know it. You understand? This is a problem actually. Because I have also met adults where I could see signs of learning difficulties, and I'm sure they were not aware. It's not only not being able to read very quickly. It's, it's, it's more complicated. You may even uh, be unable to go out of uh, the med hotel and find out your way home. You may go out of the room, 
stumbling down things, which means there is something with your balance. This does not mean you have uh, a problem with dyslexia, but you have some signs of it. Okay. Interesting, 50% of NASC employees have learning difficulties, which means what? People with learning difficulties are very, very clever, believe me. And I hate this special education needs term. They are special, but not for the reasons we believe. Because they are really people uh, with uh, different behaviors sometimes, and uh, the way they understand things may be different, but still they are marvelous. Okay. Greece. Four to six percent of children age age five and left go eighteen sorry. Only one out of five students of third class of high school has been diagnosed. Again, there is a problem of not being assessed. So what can you do? You cannot intervene if you're not assessed. And here we are responsible. Greek teachers as well, but English teachers and mostly uh, teachers with private lessons should keep on it. If all Greek people with dyslexia lived in one city, this would be the third biggest in population in the country. So we need to pay some more attention to this situation. So what finally is dyslexia? Is there any acceptable term? Well, a learning difficulty that primarily affects the skills involving accurate and fluent word reading and spelling is one of the definitions I really liked among hundreds of them. And I can say that this is one of the, the most acceptable worldwide. It was given by Sir Jim Rose, British Dyslexia Association, in 2009. Uh, you will be given uh, piece of paper at the end of this uh, lecture. I, I, I don't have so many people, but I will give you my mail and I will send it to you uh, and, and any kind of information or questions you may have uh, at the end of this presentation. Uh, I will add something to this definition which is quite important. Dyslexia can affect the way you communicate and it is different for everyone. A third of, uh, of a school where there was a dyslexia classroom. Well, I don't understand this. Each individual has different differences. So you cannot group them to save time or money. It's impossible. It's another thing to try to uh, absorb them in the mainstream class and another thing to group them somewhere else. This is not inclusion. And this is what we're trying to do, include the student in the mainstream class and support them. Identified dyslexia can result in low self-esteem, high stress and low achievement. This, this is from Dyslexia Scotland, a really interesting site. If you type Dyslexia Scotland, you may come up with a lot of useful information. So, dyslexia learning difficulties in English language teaching, which is the topic today. Take a look at this. One minute, take a look at this. I picked some screenshots from students, and this is from a senior age student. Any comments, please? Strange, huh? How much? How much? And then A. And an unfinished exercise. Very common. This means to me no support from the teacher. Uh, no specific explanation of what to do. And I realized that the student knew the difference between how much and how many. Yeah. But the point was not that. Senior A, take a look. Have you met a 
exercise like this? Okay. So there, there is, there are many things to you notice know, here. B, D, the test. One T, the deepest. The nicest words, uh, uh, letters missing at the end of a word, very common. The nice, can you see here? The prettiest, one T, the tallest, and the most. This should be an alarm for you. That you need to do something for this person. He shouts at you. Do something for me. Sorry. This summer, uh, a mother asked me to uh, start some, uh, to assess her child and then start some intervention exercises. I asked to see the books, the notebooks, and the tests. And I came across this test. 17. Hmm. And I would like to listen to your ideas. 17. <laughs> yeah, tell me. Spelling mistakes. Sorry? Yeah. Can you can you understand what's what's this? What's this? Hi. Uh, I was sad to see this. Very sad. Disappointed. Uh, survival, she or he, I don't know, and I don't want to know. Journey is wrong, you see that. She corrects or he corrects, survive. Something happened after leader, and nobody corrected anything. <laughs> Ocean would see. And I'm sorry, the year is 2014. Do you still correct me, right? No. Don't do this. Not only for students with dyslexia or learning difficulties. You don't want to hurt anybody. You just want them to try to become better. And they will become better if you become better. So please don't correct me, right? There's no reason to do that. Maybe in the 1950s, but not today. So, for this teacher, everything is fine. And I suppose they went on. And the parents were happy. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I have a daughter uh, who is uh, four years old. Yeah. And they told us that they are going to examine her if she is dyslexic or not. It's in a school program. At that age, how do you understand if the child is dyslexic? Four years old. You can. But uh, I don't think that it would be a good idea to be assessed at this point. Uh, if after the presentation your question hasn't been required, just let me know. Are there any stages from very early age? There are some signs, yes. For instance, very slow speed of writing, even when you draw things, uh, some confusion with uh, colors. But still, it's very early. You, you, you should leave some time. She's not 14, she's 4. So the best uh, age, I would say, if you can do that, you cannot define exactly, but uh, having assessed students using the Athena test, uh, I have seen that the best uh, age would be somewhere between the second, primary, third, maybe. So close. From speaking as well, from uh, responding <laughs> to your questions. Yeah, yeah. If you see that that the person, the student, or, or your uh, uh, needs some time to reply, and sometimes you don't expect what you hear, it's, it's irrelevant to what you were looking for. Then you should start suspecting. But again, leave time, and you can see that.
five minutes and say, oh, another five. Okay. So we made it. It's done. <clears throat> now, this one is very good. Signs of low confidence. Confidence is something that matters students with learning difficulties or dyslexia. And you either build it or ruin it. You. First you, the group teacher as well, parents, and also school parents. So it's up to you to support the child and make, make him or her believe in what they are and what they can do. This is the zero point. We start from there, or we finish there. Is the student relaxed while learning or very nervous? Because if, if, if he or she is nervous, that means that they don't feel comfortable. And there must be a reason for that. Make them feel comfortable. Praise them. Discuss. Somebody said before, I will tell the teacher. I will tell parents, he said. Yeah, this is something you can do. And as English teacher, English teachers, you should do that. Uh, and you could suggest uh, his or her parents to talk to the Greek teacher as well. And to see if they have noticed anything different, parents or a Greek teacher, what does the student face, where, where does the student face more serious difficulties? You have, have some signs. Do these signs have anything in common with a Greek school teacher or with what parents have noticed when, when the kid is at home and doing uh, their homework? They start crying when they have to study. It's important. So collect information. The correct time for a specialist is that when you see something that is different, then you need to take action. Whenever. I know, as Esmeralda said, that there are students that you will have and nobody in uh, the Greek school noticed that there was a difference. Uh, even then, you should do something about it. It's never too late. And you have two options. If you are a parent or a teacher and you want to help a child, there are two options. The first one is called KD, which is the state diagnosis and support center in Greece, the formal <coughs> center. Uh, a team of five scientists, a teacher, a psychologist, a speech therapist, a social worker, and a pediatrician will examine the child and give a formal diagnosis. This will be the only acceptable document for the child at schools, exams, etc., according to Law 3699, which is the law about learning difficulties and disabilities as well. Yep, where? The student should be aware that there is a difference, that there is no problem, there is no difficulty, but a difference. And at the same time that this difference can be solved with a specific path. That's it. So, uh, it would be a good idea for you to take a look at this law. Good question. Actually, it won't, it won't take you long to get the diagnosis. It will take you long to, to have an appointment. That's right. Well, uh, it's the next step, actually. Anyway, this is a problem. Uh, in Scotland, the, the worst is five weeks. In Greece, the best is six months. Sorry for the problem. 
comparison, but this is a serious problem. Let's say that my, my son is giving exams in November. He is giving exams in November, ECC. And uh, I have realized there are some uh, problems which should be assessed formally, professionally. You call TV in uh, Saloniki, in Athens, whatever, and they tell you it's fine. Uh, 5th of May. So it's useless. Second choice, ask to see a private sector specialist. This person can be a psychologist who runs evaluation tests, or it could be a center which specializes in evaluating a student and giving proper advice. You cannot use the document from the second case. For both Greek exams and uh, Michigan, Cambridge, whatever, you need, fortunately or, or not, a formal paper which can be given only by today. What about the academic As far as I'm concerned, and uh, working as an examiner as well, this is the only acceptable. Okay. It should be a state uh, sector. State. I know that according to law 3699, they have to be seen by a Kelly group. And this is the only form of paper acceptable. Now, if anything has changed, uh, I don't know. If you need an evaluation, you can do it. Okay. okay. Uh, well, most parents uh, trust a, a private specialist. Because they won't know what happens. So the specialist will run a test, very possibly an opinion <coughs> test. 